Thank you so much for joining us today at Everyday Yoga. My name is Christine. My pronouns are she and her. And today we are recording a live Zoom class. And our whole intention about our practice today is to relax and restore the body, the mind, the soul, and the nervous system. So we're gonna start flat on our backs. So go ahead and come on down to your mat or even to a blanket or your bed because this is going to be a very nourishing, soft, gentle, restorative practice. So first thing, get yourself set up in such a way that you can relax. If you prefer to start in full Shavasana this evening or morning or afternoon, depending on when you're doing this practice, go ahead and do that. I'm going to personally practice and encourage you to try bending your knees so that they're pointed up to the sky. Take your feet as wide as your mat or a little more than hip distance, hip width apart if you're not on a mat. And just allow the knees to kind of fall in towards one another. You might want to inch your feet away from the sit bones a little bit so that you have plenty of space for those knees to fall in. And right away, you might begin to notice the hip flexors start to loosen up and let go. You may want to bring your hands to your belly, or you could open up your arms and shine the palms up towards the sky. And if it feels good to you, go ahead and close your eyes. And for this practice, as for all practices, this is your practice. This is your time to take care of yourself, to restore yourself, to heal and reset your nervous system, your lymphatic system, your circulatory system, your respiratory system. We're just gonna give all of those things a nice, soft, restorative, restful practice. But if there is anything in this practice or any other practice for that matter that does not feel good to you, that doesn't nourish you, certainly that hurts you, don't do it. Just don't do it. Do what makes you feel happy. So if I have my body positioned this way and you want to be in full Shavasana, please go ahead and do that. It's one of the very few places where we humans have full control over the choices we make is right here on the yoga mat. We cannot control other people. We cannot control outside circumstances. We cannot control a lot of what is going on out in the world or even within our own jobs or homes or relationships. But one thing we can always control is our time on the mat and how we choose to spend it. And if all you did was lay in Shavasana and breathe with intention and integrity, nice, long, slow, deep, restorative breaths, you would be practicing a beautiful yoga practice. So speaking of nice, long, restorative breaths, I invite you to begin to notice your breath. You might notice it in the expansion and contraction of your belly as you inhale and exhale. You might notice it in the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe each breath. You might notice the actual flow of air entering and exiting your nose. So wherever the breath is most apparent to you, focus on that sensation in that place. And 
closing your eyes can help you to really pinpoint that and use your mind's eye to track that movement. And then you might want to begin to deepen the breath, maybe lengthen the breath, perhaps even soften the breath. In yoga, the breath is prana. And prana can be breath, but it can also be prana little p is the breath. Prana big p is our life force. And so if you think of your breath as your life force, think about inhaling it deeply filling up the torso, filling up the lungs, expanding. And as you exhale softly and slowly, think about keeping that life force nice and close to your body. So rather than just expelling it out in the world, like with a big sigh, like we would in a cleansing breath, like, and just letting it go. Let's just breathe through the nose and keep it nice and soft and gentle and keep all of that life force, all of that prana, all of that breath nice and close to us. Surrounding ourselves with our life force, with our energy, with our breath. Nice and easy. And if it feels good to you, you might cultivate a balanced breath, noticing how long it takes you to inhale. And then noticing how long it takes you to exhale and seeing if you can match the two. So if you're inhaling for a count of three or four or six or 10, see if you can also exhale for the same amount of time. And continuing with this nice balanced breath, let's go ahead and Lift the knees from one another and point them up at the sky, keeping that nice wide stance with the feet. And keep the arms wherever is comfortable for you, might be the belly, might be palms to the sky, might be arms out into a T-shape. Or you might even want to raise the arms up over your head, getting nice and long in the upper body and a stretch across the front of the shoulders. And then let's just windshield wiper the knees gently from side to side, starting with small movements here at first, even if you can bring the knees all the way down to the sides, all the way down to the floor, the mat here. Just start real slow, just a few inches to begin with. And then as you continue to move, maybe begin to deepen, getting closer and closer to the floor. And then maybe move the knees along with the breath, inhaling as the knees point up to the sky and exhaling as the knees point to either side. Inhale, center, exhale to one side. Inhale, center, exhale to the opposite side. And the next time you inhale, center, and exhale back to the opposite side, stay here and just allow the body to be soft. Maybe keeping the arms stretched overhead or maybe taking the arms out wide into a T, 
and taking your gaze out across the opposite palms from where your knees are so that you're getting a nice gentle twist here. Scan the body with the mind's eye as you continue to breathe your balanced breaths and see where you can soften a little bit. And if you want to go a little deeper, you could take the bottom leg and kind of hook the outside of the bottom ankle across the outside of the top thigh so that it's sort of encouraging that top hip and thigh to open and lengthen a little bit more. Just let it be easy. Let it be soft, let it be gentle. When you're ready to come out of that, if the bottom leg is hooked over the top, release that bind, inhale the knees and the gaze back to the sky and exhale to the opposite sides. Just staying here first before you're tempted to go deeper by hooking that bottom leg over the top one so that the body has a chance to adjust. Couple of breaths here first, and then if you wanna deepen, go ahead and hook that bottom leg over the top, or yeah, the bottom leg over the top whichever side you happen to be on now. And just let the weight of that bottom leg encourage that top hip to open up a little bit more, not pressing down here, but just encouraging a little bit of heaviness here. Couple more breaths here, scanning the body to see where you can soften, see where you can let go, see where you can relax a little bit more. And when you're ready to come out, release that top leg, inhale the knees and the gaze up to the sky, and then hug both knees in towards the heart, giving yourself a little hug, maybe rocking gently from side to side. Maybe pointing and flexing the toes, maybe rotating the ankles here. You might want to cup your knees with your palms and begin to draw circles on the sky, coming out in one direction. And then it doesn't matter which way your circles go because we're going to reverse it but you might wanna hook this movement up with the breath, inhaling as the knees come away from the heart and exhaling to draw them inward. And then when you're ready, go ahead and reverse the circles, inhaling through the opposite side and exhaling up through the other side. Nice big circles or maybe nice little circles. And then we'll go ahead and hug those knees in towards the heart again and maybe encourage the nose up towards the knees just to realign everything here. And then we'll inhale and stretch everything out nice and long. Maybe stretching long through the right side of the body, drawing the toes and the fingertips away. Maybe stretching long through the left side of the body. And then coming back to center. And then let's bring the feet together, the soles of the feet together, taking the knees out nice and wide, coming into our supine baddha konasana, this butterfly pose. And we'll just bring the hands back to the belly. Maybe lift the heart up just a little bit so you can tuck those shoulder blades in towards one another. 
And then we'll open up the arms, taking a nice big breath. And as you exhale, draw the arms around yourself, giving yourself a nice big hug. Doesn't matter which arm is closest to the chin because we are going to switch. Give yourself a nice little squeeze here and then maybe take your gaze out to the right side. You can get a little bit of stretch in the neck, drawing the, the elbows away from the neck, tucking the chin to lengthen. Taking a full breath there and then inhaling back up towards the sky with the gaze and exhaling to look out over the opposite shoulder. Tucking that chin, letting the elbows come away from the chin and getting a little bit of a stretch in the opposite side of the neck. Full breath there. And then we'll inhale, opening the arms up towards the sky and taking the gaze back up towards the sky. And then exhaling to wrap the arms around again. This time the opposite arm comes on top. We'll stay here with the gaze upward for a full breath. Give yourself a nice big squeeze hug. And then take your gaze out to one side, getting a stretch in the neck. Holding on to those shoulder blades and getting a stretch there. And then switching to gaze out over the opposite shoulder. Full breath there. And then we'll inhale releasing the arms out wide and using them to bring the knees together. And then we'll take the hands to the backs of the thighs or the front of the shins and we'll just rock and roll here up and down the back body, getting a nice little massage along the spine. Maybe three to five rocks up and down. If that doesn't feel good, just roll to one side or the other and come on up into a nice seat. You might be sitting in Dandasana with your legs out in front of you. You might wanna cross the legs in Sukhasana, just a cross-legged pose. Whatever feels good in your hips, if full lotus or half lotus feels great to you, go ahead and do that. But we'll just find a nice tall spine here. We're going to find our Tadasana back, really drawing those shoulder blades down the back, tucking the chin, lifting the crown of the head to the sky. Inhale here, and as we exhale, we'll just take the right ear over towards the right shoulder. And then from here, we'll just begin to kind of tilt the nose down to point towards the earth. And notice here the stretch that you get in the left side of the neck. Maybe gently rock the gaze back and forth just a little bit. And then we'll bring the chin all the way down to the chest. Take a full breath there. And then inhale the head to the top of the spine and exhale left ear towards the left shoulder. And maybe take the nose down towards the floor. Noticing the stretch you get in the opposite side of the neck. Breathing here, finding your balanced breath. And the next time you exhale, release the chin down to the chest. And we'll inhale the gaze up high to the sky. And then we'll do a little bit of a twist here. So let's take both legs out straight in front. I'm gonna 
be long ways on my mat here. And let's draw that right foot in towards the sit bones. Stay here or maybe cross the right foot over the left leg, keeping the left leg nice and long. Or you might want to bend the left leg under you and stack the knees here for kind of a cow face pose. Let's get into those shoulders a little bit here, finding your nice tall spine. Let's inhale our arms up to victorious pose. And as we exhale, let's twist to the right, either hooking that left elbow around the right knee or bringing the forearm to the top of the right thigh, bringing that palm back behind you nice and close to the sit bone here so that you can use that right arm as a kickstand to find length in the spine. And we'll just start here with the gaze kind of out to the right side. And you might wanna deepen by looking back a little farther back behind your shoulder or across your shoulder, tucking the chin, lengthening the spine, drawing the shoulder blades down the back. We'll inhale here and then release the hands and twist over to the left, bringing the fingertips to the floor and allowing the head to bend down towards the earth, getting a counter twist. And noticing how that feels up along the right side of the spine, the right side of the neck in that right shoulder blade, just letting the head hang nice and heavy here, creating some traction. And then we'll inhale the arms back high to the sky and exhale, drawing the left arm in towards the heart, using that right hand to hug the left arm inward, giving yourself a little bit of a shoulder stretch here. When you're ready to release on an inhale, let's lift the arms up to our victorious pose, release the legs out long, and exhale, hinging forward over the legs in a forward fold, Hashimoto Asana. Really finding length in the back body, lengthening the heart forward, tucking the chin, and maybe drawing the upper body a little closer to the thighs. Just bringing the hands to the feet or the ankles or the earth or staying nice and propped up on those fingertips, whatever feels good for you. One more full breath here, noticing how the back body expands. And then we'll inhale back to our victorious pose and exhale to release the hands down. And then we'll draw that left foot in towards the sit bones, keeping the right leg out long, hugging that left knee in towards the heart, maybe staying here for the twist or you could cross that left foot over the right. Or you could go deeper by bending the right leg and tucking it behind the hip here, stacking the knees coming into our cow face legs, gomukasana legs, sitting up nice and tall, finding as much evenness in the sit bones here as you can. You might notice that the left sit bone wants to be a little higher than the right. That's okay, but just kind of have the intention to sort of anchor that left sit bone down as much as you possibly can. And you might hold on to the feet here, or you might bring the fingertips out to the side. Find that nice tall spine, the tucked chin, the soft shoulders. We'll inhale up to our victorious pose and exhale, twisting left this time, either hooking that right arm around the knee or bringing the forearm to the top of the left thigh, bringing that left palm in behind the left hip and finding length once again in the spine. Maybe keeping the gaze out over the heart or 
to the left side or perhaps even back over that left shoulder. Using the pressure, the gentle pressure on the top of that left thigh to deepen the twist. Stay here for a full exhale, full breath. And when you're ready to inhale, bring the arms back high to the sky to center. And we'll twist right for our counter twist, bringing those fingertips down to the earth and just allowing the back to round and the head to be heavy. And noticing the traction that that head creates in the left side of the spine, the left side of the neck, the left shoulder. Stay here for another full breath. And then we'll inhale the arms high to the sky, coming back to center, uncrossing the legs and finding your forward fold once again. Just laying that torso across the thighs or maybe using a pillow or a folded blanket or bolster on the top of the thighs to rest the belly on. Maybe finding the earth or the shins or the feet with your hands, whatever feels comfortable in your body. And we're gonna stay here for three full breaths, just really expanding into that back body. Imagine the fascia, that tissue in between the top layer of skin and and the, the muscle and fat that's underneath the skin. Imagine that fascia releasing and smoothing and stretching and softening and the, allowing a deeper movement and allowing the body to relax. Find your balanced breath here. And then we'll inhale to come back up to a nice tall spine. And then we'll take a seated Baddha Konasana here, bringing the soles of the feet together, allowing those knees to pop out to either side in your butterfly wings, maybe flapping those butterfly wings up and down a little smidge here. And then we'll inhale and exhale a few cat cows here. So holding on to the feet or the ankles, let's Inhale the heart forward, looking up towards the sky. And then we'll exhale, drawing the belly button towards the spine, rounding the back. Inhale, lifting the heart, arching the back, maybe looking up a little bit higher, if that feels good in the neck. And exhale, rounding the belly button to the spine, drawing the chin to the chest. Finding that throat lock here. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. And as you exhale, cat, let's stay here for a couple full breaths. Holding on to your feet or your ankles or your shins. Really allow the arms to lengthen here as the chin drops to the chest. And really allow that push and pull here of holding on with your hands while pushing into the back body and finding lots and lots of space in between those shoulder blades. The next time we inhale, we'll come back up to a tall spine and then we'll be, be, begin to make circles in one direction. Maybe nice and small circles, maybe really generous circles. You can get the head and the neck and the shoulders involved. And when it feels right in your body, we'll switch the direction of the circles, maybe matching your balanced breath with the movement as you exhale coming towards the back and inhale coming towards the front.
And then the next time we inhale, we'll come back up to a nice tall spine here. And then we'll bring those feet out a little bit farther. So instead of a nice close Baddha Konasana, we're gonna kind of make a diamond shape here with the legs. And let's begin to just round the head forward towards the feet. Just allowing the length in the back body to create some space in between all the vertebrae. Allowing the head to be heavy here. Finding a place for your hands that feels good to you. You might find a block or a blanket or bolster to place on top of your feet for your forehead to rest on. Or you may wanna come into turtle pose if you wanna come a little deeper, or we just take the arms and kind of dive the hands underneath the shins, underneath the calves here, bringing the palms down to the mat on either side of the feet and rounding forward from here. And again, you can find a block or blanket to prop up underneath the forehead if that feels good to you, or you could just let the weight of the head hang towards the earth. And again, encourage that fascia, that tissue underneath the skin to smooth and soften. Breathing here, your nice balanced breath. Inhaling to expand the back body. And as you exhale, you might notice that your head comes a little bit closer to the earth. One more full breath here, wherever you are. And we'll begin to release the hands and walk up to a nice tall spine. And then we'll bring the knees back together and center ourselves on the mat, bringing the soles of the feet to the earth here. And we're just gonna sit up nice and tall for a moment before coming back down to the mat. If you want a little strengthening for the core here, you could release the hands out nice and straight and really think about just bringing one vertebra at a time down to the earth, using your core strength to lower yourself as slowly as possible. And once you make it all the way down to the earth, stretch everything out nice and long, rotating the feet, rotating the ankles, rotating the wrists, and then we'll bring the soles of the feet back to the earth and we'll hug the knees back in towards the heart. And then let's release the sole of the right foot down to the mat and cross that left ankle on top of the right thigh. And from here, you can simply lay in this nice figure four stretch, getting a stretch in that left hip. Or you might take the heel of the left hand and sort of press it onto the left thigh, kind of giving yourself a little bit of a massage on the hip, making space in the hip flexor here. You may want to stay here, enjoying this massage with the fingertips or the knuckles. Or you might want to thread that left hand in between the space created by the thighs by lifting the left, the right leg from the earth, lifting the upper part of the body and lacing, interlacing those fingers behind the right thigh, and then settling the shoulders and the head back down to the mat. If you want to go a little deeper, you might interlace the fingers across the front of the right shin. Just as long as the breathing isn't compromised and the shoulders and the head can be on the mat. 
You can go as deep as you like here, but if this begins to compromise the integrity of your breath, come back to an earlier step in this pose. Hmm. You might be hearing my cat. She's very excited. She's going to get to go outside for a little excursion. And maybe just rock a little gently from side to side. And just hold this wherever you are for two more full breaths, allowing the hip to loosen and release. And then we'll bring both feet back down to the mat and hug that right knee in towards the heart. Maybe staying here or finding your figure four stretch, this reclined pigeon, maybe massaging into that right thigh, noticing any places that are tender and need some attention and giving them those places that attention. Stay here and enjoy the self massage as long as you like or lift the left leg and thread the needle coming behind the left thigh or around the front of the left shin interlacing those fingers, maybe switching up how the fingers are interlaced by bringing the opposite index finger on top. Perhaps rocking gently from side to side. And taking a few deep breaths here, maybe in stillness, allowing yourself to soften and relax, keeping that chin tucked to keep the integrity in the neck. One more full breath here. And then we'll release both feet back down to the earth. Give a nice, big, long, good morning stretch. And then take the arms and the hands nice and wide in the mat, coming into a kind of a star shape here. So both hands are at the top corners of the mat. Both feet are at the bottom corners of the mat. And let's hug the right hand and the right foot over towards the left, coming into our banana asana. So if you looked at me from above, I'd be shaped like a banana laying on its side. And just breathe into the right side body here. Maybe cross that right ankle or the, over the left ankle, maybe interlace the fingers and point the index fingers and really breathe into the right lung, the right hip, noticing the stretch all the way from the fingers down to the toes. One more full breath wherever you are. And then we'll inhale back to our big good morning stretch straight along the mat. Exhale into your star shape and then inhale, hugging the left arm and leg over towards the right, coming into our banana asana on the opposite side. Maybe crossing the left ankle over the right, maybe interlacing and finding that steeple in the hands here. Noticing this beautiful stretch all along the left side body. One more full breath here. 
And we'll inhale everything back to center, stretching nice and long, and then coming into our final Shavasana resting pose, whatever that means to you. Traditional Shavasana has the feet at either corner down at the bottom, and you can press into those triceps to lift the heart just enough to hug those shoulder blades in together. And then open the arms up, shining the palms up towards the sky. Full Shavasana. If this is not comfortable for you, if you don't find this to be a restful pose, find a pose that is. Maybe with uh, blocks or pillows or bolsters underneath the knees, maybe coming back into the constructive rest pose that we started our practice in. Maybe covering up with a blanket or putting on a little jacket if you're a chilled. And bringing your awareness back to your balanced breath. Noticing the expansion of your heart with every inhale. Letting go someplace new with every exhale. And then let go even of control of the breath. Just letting the body take over for you. And allowing yourself for these last few moments to simply rest. Give yourself permission to rest. Even if your cat does not want you to rest, you can just explain to her that this is your time. Because that always works. If nothing else, we can be grateful for the sounds around us that bring life and levity to our lives. Feel free to stay here in Shavasana as long as you like. Perhaps pausing the video and enjoying the stillness for five or even 10 minutes, maybe longer if you like, and if time allows. And from here, I'll just extend my arms up overhead and bring my thumbs to my third eye. And if you like, you can enjoy me here. And just showing some gratitude to yourself for showing up. Showing compassion to yourself for taking the time out to make yourself a priority and to do more of what makes you feel good and feel happy. The light within me honors the light within each of you. Namaste. And that's all she wrote, folks. Hopefully, Princess wasn't too terribly annoying.